as Tyler said, we're up to our top 15. And just to remind the viewers at home what we do for the top 15, all three judges are going to comment on all three robots as we get towards the or off one robot. As we get towards um, the first robot, we're going to be talking progressively more. Um, but for now, all three teams will, all three judges will talk about the robots. So that's going to bring us in our 15th rank spot. We have team 379. Yeah, so uh, 379's packaging looks really slick. Uh, they used a lot of poly belt on the entire robot, um, on their feeder, on their intake. Their external intake reminds me a lot of uh, 125's 2017, uh, which was very effective. Um, their shooter also looks really slick. Um, their pocketing is really nice. Um, this would be a pretty effective robot. Uh, what do you think about it, Nate? Um, so looking at this one, you can tell they have a 125, I believe that was 2017 style intake. And they have a pretty big turret on there. The belt system did look pretty nice to me for getting the balls through to the shooter. And just all around, everything was laid out really well. Yeah, Patrick, uh, do you feel the same way? Patrick? Yeah, it looks like... Uh, looks like these guys have a nice eight-wheel pneumatic West Coast drive. They should be pretty resistant to defense. Um, yeah, overall, a great-looking robot. All right. Yeah, no, I mean, look at those bumpers. I mean, I mean that's great. But uh, <laughs> that's going to bring us to our next spot, which is the 14th-ranked spot, and that is going to be Team 207. So 207 was there a black and green robot. They had a turret on the top, and then they had an auto-centering intake. As you can tell, it goes in through a polycar or polycord system to filter the balls up. And then their drive chain was laid out pretty nice, along with all their controls. So, Yeah. Patrick, what do you think? Yeah, I like that they've got the... Um, they're using Omni wheels. Should make them super maneuverable. Um, the color scheme on this robot is super sweet. Um, yeah, I I like it a lot. Yeah, I feel uh, I feel the same way. Uh, black and green is my favorite color scheme, so oh. props to them there. Um, that, I mean, the design overall was really sleek. Um, the, very very good job. The turret looks really nice. Uh, yeah, so really good job, Team Two Hundred Seven. And is black and green your favorite color scheme because it's 701? Uh, no, not related. All right. <laughs> so that's going to bring us to our 13th ranked team, which is team 187. Um, they've got a nice uh, six-wheel pneumatic West Coast drive, a flip-down intake uh, with mechanism wheels but what, and a hopper. But what, what really sets this team apart is their catapult, um, which is located near the back of their hopper. Um, that's definitely getting them a lot of creativity points. Yeah, pretty cool robot. Centrally located battery is good for their CG. Yeah. yeah. Nick, what do you think? I I really like the catapult. Uh, they, if I recall, they were one of the only teams who did the catapult. Um, and you know, it somewhat reminded me of. 2012 where you know, everyone's doing flywheels and you know bomb squad shows up with a catapult um so they're kind of they're that team uh the cad looks really good the intake looks really good um so major props there yeah and then i really like the color scheme on it as well as the fold out intake i think the way they that was really clean and then their centering before the ball gets to the catapult was done very well yeah that that's something i noticed a lot you know 2016 kind of taught us how to do catapults just because there was just so many catapults. Um, and I really like how they, how they centered that one. It's really nice. All right. That's going to bring us to our 12th ranked team, which is team 328. Yeah. So uh, 328 for me had a lot of uh, 13, 23, 2017 vibes going for it. Um, but the, and also 17, 17 from 2012. So, I mean, the rock and swerve, they have a turret on there. They have uh, intake on both sides for the game pieces. Um, 
I think the biggest thing for me is on the internal feeder, it doesn't look like there's anything pushing it towards the center after it goes into the robot. So it, at least to me, it looks like it'll just send the balls right into the swerve module that's exposed on the inside, uh, which is a recipe for disaster. What do you think, Nate? Oh, uh, yeah. So, like, I noticed the same thing you were talking about with the centering. And then I do really like how the intakes stick out one from each side. Uh, the renders were all around done really nice. I like that they included the limelight on their turret. And then all around is just really well packaged. Yeah. Patrick, do you feel the same way? Yes, I do. And, like, um, this robot has really nice swerve modules. Um, they're almost like a slightly simplified version of 1323's modules. They look uh, very manufacturable. Yeah, this, this robot ver er, definitely took a lot of 1323 vibes and threw it on the table. So, so Patrick, to Patrick, I'm just yeah. curious. Did you just add, like, one or two points to every team with a swerve module? <laughs> Um, uh, not, not really, but I did, I do, <laughs> I do like to take a look at all the sword modules a little closer. I am curious about them. All right. It's confirmed. I don't care what he says. That's going to bring us to our 11th ranked team, which is team 182. So 182, they had an all around really nice robot. So they had one intake on each side, similar to the last team we saw. And then they had two separate shooters on different parts of the robot. So that way they could either do the rock or the ore. Their drivetrain was just the shifting West Coast drivetrain with the Vex Pro through some ball shifters. Everything was laid out really well, and the renders were done really nicely. Yeah, I, I definitely agree there. Um, the intake and shooter system seems to be pretty unique. Um, but I, for me, they lost it a little bit on the detail because it was missing, uh, some hardware in places. Um, so just a little bit more hardware there. It'll help you in the real world when you're building robots and it'll help you getting extra points. Absolutely. Patrick. Yeah. It looks like a solid design. Um, the most part. Yeah. Just little stuff, but I could see it working pretty well. All right, so that's going to bring us to our top 10. And before we get into our top 10, I just want to mention, it is crazy how much these robots have progressed, you know, from the first Catathon to seventh. Uh, what is in our top 20 could be number one for the first one over and over again, even the second or third, you know. The, the robots have gotten to a point where it is really tough to win this event. Uh, anyone who placed in the top 10 did an incredible job um, and did stuff that I can't do. Um, so... I just am incredibly impressed looking at these robots. Uh, it really is mind-blowing that these were catted in three days, uh, with some of them only one person doing it. So in 10th place, we have Team 228. Yeah, um, Team 228, their feeder looks pretty effective. Um, overall, pretty sweet robot. Um, everything seems fairly optimized. Um, yep, up the back conveyor to their shooter. Um, yeah. What do you think, Nick? Uh, you know, I really like the intake. I'm a fan of wide intakes. Um, it makes it really easy for drivers. Um, and, you know, I really like their shooter where they have the one for the smaller game piece in the back and then the larger one in the front. That's, I think that's pretty unique. Um, just a couple things. Uh, they're missing hardware in a couple places. And if you look at their drive, there was a little bit of interference with the chain. Um, so if they fix that, they'd get a little bit more points. But 10th place is still nothing to scoff at. And then, yeah, like Nick said, the wide intake is really nice for the driver's point of view. They don't really have to spend as much time lining up. They can just grab the ball and it goes in. Their indexer system looks like it'd be really good at centering the balls. They have the polycarp so they can't escape out and get into anything like some of the other robots had issues with. So all around, they pulled it off pretty well, I think. Yeah, that's a super cool looking robot. I really like it. All right, that's going to move us to our ninth ranked team, which is team 362. Yeah, so 362, uh, their feeder looks pretty dope. Um, their double shooter is really cool. Um, I like I like the split setup for the different game pieces. Uh, 
intake also looks pretty effective. It seems like it's pretty wide. Um, make it nice and easy for the drivers. Uh, what did this uh, robot make you think about, Nate? Um, so I really like the way they have everything laid out. So everything's really simplistic. You can tell there's not too much that could go wrong. Um, from this view, I know you guys can't see the indexing system very good, but the way they had it laid out was pretty nice. Looks like it'd be pretty resistant to jams. So. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Patrick? Yeah, I have to uh, agree with Nate. The the in, It's pretty cool how this robot can intake balls into the front to their central kind of hopper area and then swap them between each separate like column up to the shooter. Yeah. Do that's something, you know, I think teams might gloss over, but I really like, you know, thinking about that in CAD. That's, that's what CAD's for, you know, taking your ideas and putting them into, you know, a real physical sense that you could figure out small details like that. So that's going to bring us to our eighth rank team, which is team 409. So 409, they had, they were one of the only teams that I saw with a, well, there's a few, there's one of the few teams with a partner fork. And then their drivetrain style, they also add something similar to 2016. Uh, Robo Wrangler is not quite as a uh, as much of a raise as a lot of the other teams have had, but they do have a small raise. And then once the balls are into the robot, they go through their turret, which looks very nice. Um, it was all around a pretty good robot. Their pull mechanism was very nice. Yeah, I, uh, I definitely agree with that. The turret looks really good. Um, I, I like the single partner forks um, and the renegade, renegade style drivetrain uh, looks like it'll serve them very well in this game. Yep. What do you think, Patrick? I agree with everything that's been said. Um, yeah, the, the drivetrain looks pretty serious. Uh, can definitely go down into the quarry and get back out no problem. Um, yeah. And I like the integration of the forks. That's, uh, I didn't see very much of that. All right. That's going to bring us to our seventh ranked team, which is team 281. Um, team 281 had a nice flip down out over the front um, intake, and that put balls up into their indexing system, which reminded me a lot of uh, 971's Steamworks robot. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. That's all, like definitely winning them creativity points there because we didn't see much of stuff like that. Feeds up into their central column shooter mechanism. Um, yeah, I think it's a it's a pretty interesting robot, and I believe they have a they're running differential swerve drive as well. Yeah, I was just about to say, are you really not going to mention the differential swerve? Um, <laughs> Yeah, and the differential swerve's nice. Uh, if only they had uh, some fish on the bottom of their feeder, it would be even more like 971 from 2017. Um, <laughs> it just seems really effective. Yeah, so one thing I did like with this one is their lightning patterns. Uh, a lot of the teams I saw, they are way too aggressive on their lightning patterns, and they seemed to get it done right. And then the 971 indexer style from 2017 is really nice. Yeah, I mean, it's really nice until you have to machine it, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. That's going to bring us to our sixth ranked team, which is team 363. Uh, yeah, so team, uh, team 363, uh, they really got it for me in creativity, going with the triangular drive base. Uh, not as creative as a circle, but it's still pretty cool. Um, they catted up a lot of their wires as well as pneumatic tubing. Um, and their pull mechanism also looks like it would be pretty effective. So uh, what do you think about it, Nate? Uh, so this was definitely really creative, obviously, with the triangle uh, drive base. All around their CAD looked really good with their color scheme. They seemed to stick through it. The wires and the including of the pneumatic tube, I think they were the only team that included their wires and the pneumatic tubes in their CAD. Um, so that was all around pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything else to add, Patrick? Yeah, I like their swerve modules. It's like a triangular Mark II module. It's pretty cool. So just curious, uh, how would a triangle affect swerve performance? 
it, I mean, it, it should work fine. It's just you got to have the code in place to know where the wheels are. Gotcha. All right, guys. So that's going to take us to our top five. And in fifth place, we have Team 372, made up of Steven and Anderson. While I disagree with the stickers they affixed to it, the robot they designed appears incredibly robust and nimble with a well-designed sort module. Uh, yes, so uh, their swerve was very unique for sure. And then I really like the color scheme. As you can tell, they have the uh, bucket silent takes out. They can do both of the balls. And then their renders were definitely ahead of a lot of people. Um, I'm not sure if we can all agree that Inventor is better than SolidWorks, but all around, I think we can agree this is a pretty good robot. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, the wide intake's really nice. Swerve looks really good. Uh, the CAD looks pretty detailed. If it had a couple more wires, it'd be nice. But as you can see, the belly pan has rivets in every hole. So, yeah, props to them. Yeah, I think um, this robot is actually designed to just intake the rocks, I believe, and it has enough ground clearance to just sort of go over the ore. And I thought that was a pretty clever way of sort of filtering out and only having to deal with one thing. Yeah, that is uh, definitely a, real, a really good design. And this robot just really looks like it could take a beating. Um, that's, that's something I really personally uh, prefer in uh, an FRC design. So, in fourth place, we have Team 250, made up of Justin and Chenchi. This robot is another very nice piece of design work. This is one of those robots I look at the Catathon, and I really wish I could actually see it built on a field, because I think it would be really awesome to watch. Patrick, kick us off. Yeah, this robot is a pretty unique design. It has almost two separate mechanisms for handling um, the balls. They're kind of like mirror imaged of each other, though. So it feeds up and then goes like through this loop system and delivers the piece, the like game pieces to two individual catapults, one on either side of the robot. Um, it's a very unique design and it's uh, pretty, actually pretty well thought out and detailed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a fan of the catapults. As I said earlier, uh, double catapult looks really nice. Um, I find it funny that they took the time to throw a shocked Pikachu on the belly pan. Uh, I don't know if I would have done that, but hey, if they had the time to do it, then major props. Yeah, so this robot, I really like the color scheme on it. Obviously, it looks very nice. As you can see what's playing on the screen right now, their renders are really nice. Uh, the dual catapult is pretty unique. There's only two teams, I believe, that did catapults. And then their intake style I really like, kind of similar to 5460 this year. That's all around pretty good. And then they have a really nice West Coast drive. Can't really go wrong with it. And a, and a NASA sticker, which uh, I... Yeah. I just want to yeah. jump in. I think they get bonus points for making a seamless video that just loops seamlessly over and over. That is extremely <laughs> impressive that this video lasts 10 seconds, and I cannot tell where it re-loops at. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that actually is pretty crazy now that I look at that. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.